Hello everybody, we're in sunny Orlando at the Microsoft 365 Community Conference. Uh, Gokin, this is day one, what do you think so far? Absolutely amazed by the quality and by the venue, by the weather, by, by literally everything. So, pretty happy to be here, Lance. I mean, especially the weather, it snowed uh, not even a week ago in Canada, so I'm super happy to be here for the weather. Indeed. But also, 3,000 people this week at the M365 Community Conference. I think this is the biggest one biggest since one. Uh, the SharePoint Conference uh, back then. And uh, something that we learned during the keynote today was we have over 300 people from Microsoft here from all different levels, from executives to product group to marketing and a lot of customer focused and partner focused people as well. So. Over 300 people to uh, connect with, to ask questions, which is amazing. And all about co-pilots, the age of <laughs> co-pilots. The age of co-pilots. But uh, let's get into the topic of the keynote, Gokin. Uh, so keynote uh, just finished not even one hour ago. Um, do you want to get started? What do you think was one of the big topics of keynote? And you're not allowed to use the word co-pilot. Oh, that's going to be very difficult. But let me try. So. Jeff Deeper, a big classic, just ran to the main stage, and he started his show, let's call it that way, and it was pretty amazing because we got the three main pillars. The forbidden words, <laughs> you team, can say okay, you can co-pilot, say teams, and SharePoint, and he gave like all the f exciting features they're working on, stuff that they have been releasing and released. So it was more a recap of all what they have done in the last year, and at the end, a few exciting to be announced feature. Let's call it that way. Yeah, I, I think we also have to be aware that this conference is, well, right now we are April 30th as we are recording this, but there is a big Microsoft conference happening by the end of the month of May in just a few weeks, which is Microsoft Build. And uh, when you have a conference that close to one of the two big Microsoft events of the year, you never know how many announcements you are going to get. But something that was very different for me compared to the usual uh, Jeff keynotes is that it was a lot more about what we have today it was not this is the stuff coming in six months in 12 months it was the stuff that we have today and uh, Jeff actually compared the transition we are going through right now from not using AI to having copilot and using AI to what we went through in about 2014 when companies were like am I really gonna move to the cloud is the cloud really worth it so we're in that sort of transition again and there's a big focus on something at the beginning a big word that starts with s Gokin. Wh which one is it security no no security? <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, you dirty mind. <laughs> Gokin has a dirty mind. I'm taking security. Okay, my bad. My apologies. No, that's okay, Gokin. Um, responsible. We'll, responsible put, we'll, put, AI. we'll put your dirty yeah. word okay. in the responsible okay. AI and responsible IT category. They don't see anything. Uh, but there is a lot of focus on the fact that Copilot is safe, Copilot is secure, and on all the compliance part of Copilot. And... Uh, yeah, Jeff made a solid statement about that the prompts and data it belongs to us and Microsoft will never use it to train their models um, as well as the data that we get or the generative AI responses that we get are actually secure that we will only see stuff that we are able to see and there is no leak or something like that. So those two solid statements were really done by, by Jeff to reassure people if they still had questions about is Copilot safe, secure, can I see data from my manager, and so on and so on. So uh, That's one of the big advantages of Copilot versus using ChatGPT3 versus using Gemini, Claude, which if you don't have the enterprise subscription, which is as expensive as Copilot and has less features actually, uh, you're sharing that data on those free services, whereas with Copilot, part of that money you pay is because you have that commercial grade data protection. But now let's talk about the pillars. The first pillar was Copilot. Co yes. uh, do we see anything new about Copilot? To be honest, uh, no. We have seen like how you could use Copilot, a few very nice prompts, 
um, the difference between the web and the work, as well as an introduction to Copilot Studio, where you could actually have connectors going to SAP, retrieving data, responding to Copilot. New, I wouldn't say yes, but exciting stuff that people who never saw it was very good. Awesome. Yeah, I agree with you. We didn't really see anything new, no. but we saw all the stuff that was released. And yes. I think still for a lot of people at the conference, Copilot is still at that new stage where yes. the fact that they had live demos on a keynote, yes. and yes, all the demos were, were live. live. Uh, this was something that you don't see often in keynotes. And yeah. I guess we went from having Copilot only as pre-recorded demos to now we have them as live demos, which shows the maturity yes of the product, but now let's switch over to the second pillar, which is Microsoft Teams. Four favorites. Well, I'm not sure, because SharePoint is in my heart so SharePoint, bit. okay, yeah. But uh, Teams, how many users? Uh, they said about seven? 320 20, yeah, million, million monthly active users. users. That, that's still a lot. I mean, I'm sure we'll get at 700, but for now, only why do you have in mind 700 million? I don't know why. So that's how much you owe me. <laughs> uh, that's how much I you owe me. I have that in mind for some reason. Uh, I tell you, yeah, it's, no. Jeff, you got to write me the no, check. Because Jeff shared um, numbers with us. With, he never did it publicly. May I just state them now? Sure. Okay. So he told us that we had more than 2.5 billion files per day coming to the cloud, to M365, as well as a half million SharePoint sites per day. Can you imagine those numbers? They're pretty phenomenal. That is crazy. That's 2.5 billion, billion documents per day. Per day to the cloud. And 500 wow. new SharePoint sites. And there's also, I kind of learned a new word today, Gokun, exabytes. So you know how uh, like most people look at their uh, storage it's in gigabytes, or some people that use it a lot, they're talk terabytes. Microsoft is now talking exabytes. Which, how much storage is that? Because we got terabytes, we got petabytes, petabytes and then we got exabytes. Yeah. That's a lot of zeros at that, the end of That's uh, a lot uh, of zeros. How many zeros go, Ken? I would say nine is a billion, 12, I would say 15. We're going to have to fact check that uh, in post editing <laughs> after. I'm guessing 15. To see how much. So please come if it's not true. <laughs> well, we're going to have to fact check you in post and see how much is an actual exabyte. But yes, 11 exabytes of content. And the servers running SharePoint, they have, what is it, 64 million cores of CPU, which again, is big numbers. I can't even imagine what it looks like because those numbers are so big. But okay, we talked a bit about SharePoint. We, uh, for Teams, any closing talks for Teams, we switched over to SharePoint. Yeah. But we had nice demos such as vo voice isolation. Uh, there was a real meeting going on and with a lot of noise yeah, in the background. Actual a meeting. The a keynote meeting. speaker yeah. joined the meeting. There were people outside of the room. So it was really cool, again, have that real demo effect that shows Indeed. the maturity Indeed. of the features, but nothing really new for Teams, right? Did yeah, I miss anything? No, Mesh, Teams Recap, Copilot prompts, and so on. All, I would say, classic stuff that we already knew. But again, like if you have 3,000 people, I'm pretty sure 20% have never heard about that. So it's always good to refresh the memories and show new stuff, uh, uh, show existing stuff. So yeah, it was pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, now SharePoint. SharePoint, we actually had some really cool stuff. Yes. Let's start uh, OneDrive Copilot. When are we getting it? Now. Now? In summer. This summer. This year, summer, um, Copilot will be GA. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> and I don't think that everyone really understood that. There was no big applause or something like that. But I'm, well, I'm, we're letting you I'll, know. I'll be honest. I was a bit disappointed by that because if you look at the roadmap, it was initially it was supposed to go GA in May. Yes. So I was honestly expecting that Jeff would come up on stage and say, one voice copilot, by the way, log in and you have it. Like you don't know it for you, copilot for you, for you, for you, for you, for you. Same thing for SharePoint copilot. Again, yeah. on the MP65 roadmap, it should go G in May. And yet, we didn't really hear yeah. Uh, when. Yeah, they didn't say. So for OneDrive, we know it's coming GA in summer. For SharePoint, no ETA has been delivered or said to us. So um, we have seen, however, one image or one little demo video. 
about the SharePoint Copilot, where you can build beautiful and flexible sites. It was really beautiful. Yeah. The, the way the prompt was structured and the way they created the site, that was, I did not know Copilot in SharePoint would be that. So it was really good to see it, but I can't wait to get my hands on it, especially that I'm, no, I'm paying for my own M365 Copilot subscription, yeah. so I can't wait to have it and play with it. To be honest, when I saw it for the first time, it was a quite different experience from the Copilot that we knew from Outlook, Excel, Teams, and so on. It looks like a bit different, but we have to see it. Let's wait summer, and we'll have a preview of, of OneDrive, and hopefully very soon about SharePoint. Now, another Copilot I wanted to talk about, Copilot in Stream. That, again, on the roadmap, that was also for May 2024 GA, but we didn't really hear anything about Copilot in Stream. However, we got shown a really cool feature that I had no idea Microsoft was working on, which is transcript editing your video. So you create a nice video, you upload it to stream, and then instead of you know, opening up Adobe, Camtasia, or any other tool and manually cutting, the AI will create a transcript for you, and you can edit it as a Word document, which will edit the actual video. So you don't need to pay for expensive video editors anymore because AI will just do it for you. It, uh, like even in the second keynote, uh, after the main one, uh, we have seen even a video about how you can edit like real videos and even change rotation of people talking in a video, changing the colors, changing the way on how they smile. They just showed the video, pretty amazing. Um, I would say this is going to change the video world if, if we can do that. Well, the thing is we can, I mean, we can already do a lot of it. So I pay for Camtasia Auditate. Yeah, but not from your workspace, not no. from Teams. And no, but Microsoft. I'm saying I, I'm, I'm paying for Camtasia yeah. Auditate, which has that transcript functionality, which is amazing. Already good, yeah. But I pay $20 a month for that. Yeah. Other than Copilot, now I can save $20 a month because it's Microsoft will have it yeah. in M365. Yeah. So I am super excited yeah. for that. What else do we see oh. in the keynote? Any other cool demos? A lot. We have seen Audifel, a SharePoint premium feature. We have seen eSignatures, SharePoint premium feature. A lot of Viva demos, as well as a bunch of other stuff that we enjoyed. But there was really... Nothing new. Nothing new. Like, Not, like short, we knew about everything. Yeah, like eSignatures has been there for like a while. Um, Audifel has been announced like six months ago, something like that. So we're yeah. still waiting for it. But those, again, features that for new people would, is, is like a big news. Yeah, and uh, something else that right after the keynote, it's actually for the keynote, right? We didn't really miss anything Basically, at the that's keynote what level. We've seen, but, but right after the more. keynote, we yes. had a second keynote, which was branded as a general session, yes. but it was still the only session at that time. So I'll call it the second keynote. The second keynote. The yeah. second keynote. And the second keynote was all about Copilot. Co now, uh, Gokan, I know we already talked about it. There was nothing really new. Except one thing, which, which, not, which yeah. you like, which but is. most of the session was, again, a recap of Copilot. Educating people on what you can do with Copilot today, no real new features except one of them. Yes. So basically, soon we will get usage about Copilot. And you know what? Free. We are not going to pay for it. So we are going to be able to know in which tool we are using and um, Copilot and prompts, maybe Word or Excel or PowerPoint, and you will get those reports, dashboards, all of that, as in the compliance center, as in security, those dashboards that we can use um, in order to understand how the usage is um, for Copilot. So that was pretty amazing, and that's what we missed. He also said that we will also get more admin features in the admin center soon coming to, to Copilot. I love admin features. <laughs> Uh, I love that. And lastly, yeah. there was the last yeah. thing we're going to talk about, maybe not for this video, maybe but for another video, it, yeah. but there was a huge blog post dropped on the tech community about all the cool stuff that Microsoft started shipping in SharePoint Premium. So it was not really covered in the keynotes, but I know there's going to be a general session about. later today, yes. so we should maybe... Go attend that Absolutely. and do another video where we can really deep dive on the SharePoint Premium stuff. Uh, but anything else you missed, Logan? One thing I really want to say is thank you, Microsoft, because when they showed the recap in Teams or e-signatures and autofill, they didn't mention the Premium. They just made it as if it was part of the tool, which I think is a, a 
pretty strategic move because you're not confusing people. And the message was clear. We have all of those features. You want to use it, maybe the licensing is different, but some companies don't care about the licensing. They just want to use a tool. And that's exactly what they did. No mention of premium, no mention of licensing, no mention of enterprise licenses. This is the feature, this is the use case, and go for it, use it, which I really like. So thank you so much, so much Microsoft. So if they didn't talk about it, it's free, right? Or you paid for me? I never said that, but uh, you may always hope for it. I, I'll, I'll hope for it. But that's it. Thank you very much, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed. And uh, uh, Gokan, what conference are we going to be at next? What big conference? Uh, we'll be in Brussels. For we'll be, the yes, European Power, Power Platform, Platform conference. conference. So uh, are we going to do a keynote recap over there as well? You know what? If you offer me car uh, caramel macchiato, I would say yes. I'll offer you all the caramel macchiatos you want. There so it's go. a deal. There we go. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel for the latest Microsoft 365 Power Platform and certification news. So see you soon. Cheers.